I think we, we grew up, Nick and I, I think, had similar growing up uh, that we grew up, I will, I'll say casual horror fans, like we were horror fans, um, but not, as we joke with Tal, is he's all in. He's playing poker, he's all in. And we, we were more casual fans, and then certainly the more, the more movie savvy I became, the more horror fan I became as, as we went along, so that's my story. I think in, it's kind of similar. In my case, I always say, like, somebody mentioned, actually, it's not in the documentary, but Rodrigo at some point mentioned that horror is basically one more language. And I agree with that. I mean, give me a good movie. Whether it's horror, it's fucking awesome. If it's something else, you do it as well, you know? But I would say that, and this is what I mentioned before, this dog definitely made me reanalyze a lot of the things I saw before. And a lot of my own preconceptions that I had about the genre, like, I would look at films nowadays differently, you know, under a different light. Uh, for me, the line of the movie is when a, um, a social anthropologist named Joseph Hayes, that, that's what he does, he said that, um, you know, when, when people, we form cultures based on shared experiences and, the, and a culture uh, based on subjecting themselves repeatedly to fear-inducing stimuli, um, it see through the illusions that, that, uh, that life has to offer us pertaining to uh, the mysteries of death because we're offered a lot of different explanations and a lot of sort of ways we should handle it and what happens, maybe perhaps uh, we sprout wings and play harps up in the clouds, uh, some say. And, and I, think, um, I think what he said, which really resonated with me, which was a big aha moment, was that you know, horror fans kind of get, a, get away from all the sort of theorizing as to what happens after we die. And we, we're, it's, like, it's like a toy. It's like you play with that toy in the dark and then you leave it for a while. But you, the, the thing is you play with it, you engage it, you, you tackle it, and you don't necessarily come away with answers, but at least you try to process a kind of an alternative way of looking at that whole thing. And that really changed it for me. I mean, uh, you know, this movie, and. It's like for horror fans, it's almost like you don't gotta tell them this stuff, you know what I mean? It's almost like we, we know already. So, so it was like a burning thing to try to explain it to other people. And that's a, a big thing because Joseph isn't necessarily a horror fan. He's like, he observes cultures. And to look at the culture of horror from outside, I thought, wow, that was really eye-opening. I thought that was really rad. Really all around the world, people band together with, uh, it, it's like they share the same language, the language of horror. And that was really resonated more than I really ever realized that that was out there. One of the things that horror suffers from is this misconception, this misunderstanding. You know, it's, oh, it's just simple gore, it's just blood, and that's it. And no, there's a lot more than it. And I was just actually talking to a friend. She was like, oh, I really, really like it, and I don't like horror. And I'm like, in a way, I kind of feel it plays even better to non-horror fans. Because horror fans, as you said, they know this. They experience it day to day. And non-horror fans, I think they're going to come out of this theater, and hopefully other theaters, <laughs> looking you know, at this and saying, you know what? You know, that crazy dude that you know, I knew before or whatever, he's not crazy. Like, he actually has his feet on the ground, and you know, he knows what he's doing. I don't know if it was surprising, but wherever you go, I will say that The Exorcist is the most important horror film ever made, because wherever you go, it's always the same reaction, like, that movie changed, like, that movie changed the way I think about everything. Like, that's what you hear from people, like, where, what, no matter what country you go to, no matter what age group of horror fans, it's always The Exorcist messed everybody up. And actually, my mom, you know, she went to go see The Exorcist in the theater and left uh, as soon as the, the, you know, the Reagan voice started. Uh, and it's, um, that was a pretty surprising thing. Another surprising thing, and I won't necessarily mention names, but this is a very kind of philosophical question, why horror? And sometimes you get very non-philosophical answers from the um, older generation of filmmakers who look at uh, life and perhaps the industry in a very practical way. So we're fishing for a lot of deep shit, you know, why do you make horror? And they said, well, because I made a movie in the 60s that was really successful and nobody lets me make anything else. And that's the answer you get. And we're fishing for all this deep, like, soul-plunging shit, and we get an answer like that. So um, that was kind of like, okay, next question, you know, moving right along. There definitely is decades more work for uh, modern, younger filmmakers to sort of um, take into account when they're crafting their stories. But no, uh, George Romero used to read EC comic books uh, under a blanket with a flashlight. 
John Carpenter um, is a, a huge fan of horror. I mean, the, the original thing, I think, is his ultimate all-time favorite movie. Um, but, I, but I also would say that um, uh, uh, sort of later generations um, have, have had, there was such a thing as a horror fan. There were, um, you know, maybe back then there was one magazine that was out and that was Famous Monsters and maybe Monster Times and a couple. Now there's tons. Now there's like social events and horror fashion and all kinds of ways to express your fandom. So I don't know if there are more or less fans. Um, the, the newer guys that are coming up are more or less fans than the older guys that are out there. But, um, but I, I, there's just more avenues now to express that. So basically, we conducted 60-something uh, interviews, each lasting anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour. And yeah, there's gold in them hills, you know what I mean? Um, hey. Um, so, <laughs> he's just saying hello. Um, yeah, so there's loads of stuff in there. Uh, Alan Jones, uh, British journalist, tells a story about how uh, one of the first festivals he ever put on, is he runs a festival in the UK called Fright Fest, and there was two women in the audience, uh, and he was sure that they were at the wrong movie. And he went, excuse me, ladies, um, this is a horror film. I believe you want uh, the cinema two doors down. And they were, they said, fuck off. We love Texas Chainsaw Massacre, sonny boy. Get the fuck out of here. Like, and, and they, like, they gave him this like really deadly response, and that was in there. And there was, uh, I think, like, there's, there's a scene that, uh, with Gary Poland talking about you know, um, how his, his folks also had to kind of fight off the neighbors and say, like, Our, my kid's okay, he might draw skeletons, but, you know, and then in Gary's own words, he says, you know, I'm not going to shove firecrackers up your cat's ass or anything like that. <laughs> and any kind of thing like that, I always like to have in a movie. I'm but, like, yeah, this whole idea of throwing Tyler off an airplane, um, <laughs> because I know he's kind of afraid of that, but I kind of die really quickly, sadly. <laughs> I'm afraid of heights. Like that's not you don't do that to a guy that's afraid of heights. No, that's not the reason. That's the reason you don't do it. Okay. I'm already getting like I'm getting freaked out just talking about it. Don't even. There's a few. There's a whole reel of people talking about what it was like when they were kids and stuff. Like there's a ton, man. Like you're, the Blu-ray is going to be amazing. Uh, well, horror has a, uh, a, a remarkable ability to adapt to everything. So every technological change that comes along in, on Earth, there's usually a wave of horror that kind of follows that. So, um, uh, do you know what creepy pasta is? That stuff is super big with like young kids. It's basically uh, like 17 year olds trading urban myths about weird stuff they see in the woods. And, that stuff is enormous. I mean, so it's almost like, I almost feel like it's going back to like the oral tradition of like suggestion and uh, almost this Lovecraftian, did I see it or didn't I, did I not see it kind of vibe. Um, also like, you know, cell, cell phone games and stuff like that. For example, the Y Horror game, <laughs> which you can get on Android or uh, iPhone. Um, but it'll, that'll depend, I, in my opinion, on the changes in culture and changes in society. So uh, where it'll go next, I don't know. Probably remakes will probably catch on real big. <laughs> what about sequels? Do you think sequels will ever be popular? No. <laughs> cool. That'll never happen. 19 Freddy movies later. <laughs> we uh, had a Kickstarter campaign, and uh, for all of you that contributed, thank you very much. Um, and uh, one of uh, one of the names that came through was E. Wood, and we were like, oh, wouldn't that be funny if it was Elijah? And sure enough, it was. So uh, he actually tweeted out that he had supported us, and uh, so then we decided uh, to do an animation section of, we knew we couldn't cover all the movies, the horror movies, uh, and also we knew that that has already been done in all these type of documentaries before. So we decided what's the best way that we could uh, do it. So Tal came up with a way too brief history of uh, horror, and then so we thought, wouldn't it be great to take a break from Tal telling it and have someone else tell it? So we started rhyming off names of uh, Christopher Walken and like all these different people that, wouldn't it be great if we could get them to do it? And then Nick and I kind of looked at each other like, okay, no, seriously, who should we get? And they're like, didn't Elijah Wood contribute to our Kickstarter? So we literally just called him and said, what do you think? And he totally did, and I kept waiting for an agent to call me, and he never did, and 
So it was great, yeah. So he totally came on board. It was terrific.